Nintendo Switch is 2017's MVP. No questions asked, no contest. Releases like Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Splatoon 2, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and most recently Super Mario Odyssey have all set the world on fire in their own special way. These games amongst others have led to the platform reaching more than half of Nintendo's previous console we use lifetime sales in 6 months. This kind of momentum is rare, not just for Nintendo, but for the industry. For context, the current gen golden child PS4 is currently being pretty handedly outpaced by Switch. At this point in PS4's life cycle, that system was more than 600,000 hardware units behind and more than 7 million software units behind Nintendo Switch. This is all without the benefit of a holiday launch or a staggered release across regions to better gauge and prepare stock. This sort of thing is almost unprecedented. These feats have been deemed by Nintendo's president Tetsumi Kimishima as Wii-like. And if he's right in that, we're in for one hell of a 2018. Many are doubtful of Nintendo's ability to keep up the current pace of Nintendo Switch and honestly, I can't blame them. In the time since Nintendo Switch has been released, more than 200 games have been published for the platform. This is a ridiculous amount of games for a console's first few months. More importantly than that, two of those games, maybe more depending on who you ask, are heavy hitting contenders for Game of the Year 2017. More about that in a video linked in the top right corner. Most consoles are lucky to have any memorable games at all in their launch windows, let alone generation defining games in that amount of time. One game in that window has been done before on previous generations, Super Mario World and Super Mario 64 come to mind, but two on one platform is unprecedented. How could 2018 outclass that? Well, if I'm honest, it won't be easy, but it's definitely possible, and if history is any indication, we're looking pretty good in that regard. Let's look at Nintendo's last platform's second year on the market with the knowledge that they've made it a point to prioritize a steady release schedule rather than the scattered burst approach that was common back in the Wii U era. Due to its relatively short life and low sales, we didn't get a whole lot of big releases for the Wii U, but that console's second full year on the market brought a few heavy hitters, namely Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker, Bayonetta 2, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, and a few others. I say the situations for Switch and Wii U are pretty directly comparable in the fact that Wii U's first year brought with it a Zelda game, Mario Kart 8, and even a 3D Mario game. Yes, a 3D Mario game. With that in consideration, having representation from that many big Nintendo franchises with a touch of third party support is a big deal and a good indicator of what we can expect from Switch's second year. Third parties in particular will definitely dramatically improve on their offerings for Wii U with the Switch. Just this week we've seen statements after statements from companies singing praises for it and detailing just how successful it's been for them, despite them all being pretty tepid on Switch support in 2017. Switch is responsible for 19% of Ubisoft's profits, which is tied with PC's portion of their profits. There are currently only two major Ubisoft games on Nintendo Switch. Switch, compared to the seven released on the other platforms, six of which aren't available on Switch, all of which are available on all of the other platforms with the only exception being Mario plus Rabbids. I think it's safe to assume we'll be seeing some 2018 announcements coming from them. Maybe even an Assassin's Creed game made specifically for it, in the same vein as Assassin's Creed Rogue or something like that. Though I wouldn't rule out a Assassin's Creed Origins type game either. Though they were less specific, Bandai Namco has a similar story to tell. All three of the games they released on Switch are selling favorably for them and they've pledged to reveal three major exclusive titles throughout 2018. That's not to mention any multiplayer platform games that will likely make their way to Switch. In particular, I think a Dark Souls collection is pretty likely at this point considering FromSoft's statement from December 2016. They've confirmed having Dark Souls 3 up and running on Switch at a level they were happy with and were waiting to see if it would be financially viable to release the trilogy on Switch. I think it's safe to say good ports sell well on Switch, which leads me to take 2 statement. Take-Two currently has one game available on Nintendo Switch, 2K18, 
and another one on the way, LA Noir. They made it clear that they are pleased with 2K18's current performance and have pledged to support Switch on a corporate level moving forward. That means all of their brands are on the table. Specifically, they hinted at future Rockstar announcements. I think a Grand Theft Auto 5 announcement for Switch is inevitable at this point. All of the stars are aligned and it'll give another shot in the arm to the already meteoric cells of that game, which I'm also in a video about. You know what? I'm going to make a playlist with all the videos I mentioned in this video. Check those out afterwards if you like this one. Bethesda has three games coming to Switch and have already thrown their hat in the ring for more, despite none of those games being out just yet. Blizzard has voiced potential interest in Switch ports of Hearthstone and Overwatch. I sort of want to group the Japanese publishers together given the fact that their response is less surprising. Most of them were sold on Switch from day zero. Even Konami threw their hat in the ring for God's sake. They seem to be teasing something from Castlevania making an appearance, so we'll see about that. Capcom released two games for Switch despite their stupid excuse for their lacking support for Switch in the first year. They made it a point to label the Ultra Street Fighter 2 port as a smash hit, and they've stated that they'll be preparing multiple Switch versions of their titles moving forward. I think it's pretty safe to say we might be seeing a Mega Man game coming from them. Koei Tecmo is quote extremely happy with the success of Switch and they went as far as volleying some sick burns at other companies for being hesitant with their Switch support. Square Enix now says none of their franchises are off limits for Switch and they will be aggressively supporting it in the future. This makes my mind immediately gravitate towards a Kingdom Hearts 3 port and that long talked about Final Fantasy 15 Port. Really every major third party publisher you can think of is moving full speed ahead toward Switch. Except EA. EA says FIFA 18 for Switch was the worst performing version by far. Thing is, that was a bad port. Never mind the fact that they didn't even try to port a game that appeals to Nintendo fans' sensibilities. They had a lot of low cost options. I'm sure plenty of Nintendo fans would have bought into a Plants vs. Zombie game, even or even games more suited to the hardcore home console gaming on the go vision. Maybe a Dead Space trilogy port, maybe Save Visceral, a Star Wars game, but whatever, EA's going to EA, so let's just ignore them for now and move on. All of this is to say Switch has a ton of third party publishers, over 300 to be exact, ready to make games for Switch, many of which will likely release in 2018. In fact, I'd say a majority of the third party games me and Bob from the Wolf Den wanted in our video about third party games are very much a possibility given these positive statements from the companies behind those very games. This is in addition to the first party games we know about already, being Yoshi for Nintendo Switch, Kirby Star Allies, and Fire Emblem for Switch. There have been Nintendo reps that have also claimed that we could see Metroid Prime 4 and Pokemon for Nintendo Switch in 2018. That's not to mention the games we know nothing about. At this time last year, we didn't know about almost any of the big Nintendo Switch games we're playing today. I think we can expect to hear similar announcements from Nintendo's first party teams moving forward. What's Retro Studios working on? Where's Smash Bros? What's happening? Happening with Mother 3. According to Reggie fils we'll have an answer for a majority of these questions next year. I also have a good feeling about Switch's chances to see apps released in 2018, virtual console, better online functionality with the confirmed full rollout of Switch Online. 2017 was a great freshman year for Nintendo Switch, but I think 2018 is when it will really solidify itself as the undisputed top dog, as is common with Nintendo's handheld. Regardless, we're likely to know more come January. That's usually a good time for Nintendo Directs. But those are my thoughts. What do you think? Do you think Switch will have an even better 2018 than it did 2017? What games do you think we'll see? Let me know what and why in the comments down below. If you liked this video, make sure to let me know by subscribing and clicking like. And if you loved it, click the notification bell and share it with someone you know that needed more reason to buy a Switch. Don't forget, new videos every Tuesday and Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, that's it for me. See you next week.